Hey everybody, it's Chase from Blah here. Thought I would sit down and do a video for you guys and gals, but let me get a sip of my water first. Get my beautiful radio voice going. You hear that? Gotta quench my thirst. All right. People talking about sugar addiction. We're seeing all these, these um, keto tart idiots and stuff. And don't get me wrong, I think ketogenic diets can have some actual therapeutic benefits. Okay, I wanna be clear on that. I'm not knocking the therapeutic end in some cases. But they start with this pseudoscientific nonsense. And a bunch of people out there, bunch of people out there. Sugar addiction, they're acting like it's real. And here's the thing, you know, you get people who are like, but but I saw these studies, I can't quit eating sugar. And I saw these studies on rats showing sugar. Really? Sugar. The slang term sugar? Because you're telling me there's a study done on, on sugar. Because last time I checked, it's kind of strange when supposed nutrition research uses layman's terms. Do you mean sucrose? I hope you mean sucrose. Because people love to say the word sugar is an all-inclusive thing when they're talking about a handful of refined sugars. They usually mean sucrose or high fructose corn syrup. Of course, then you have the, the clowns who try to act like one is worse than the other as if they're not interchangeable. They're pretty much interchangeable. I am aware there's a slight mathematical difference, but it's pretty minuscule in the grand scheme of things. Like, come on. You're not consuming significant amounts of either one if you care about your health, particularly on a regular basis. So let's just drop that nonsense. All right, sugar. So let's assume sucrose. They mean sucrose, but people aren't addicted to that. And I will prove it to you. What people who have binge eating issues have a problem with is hyper palatable calorie dense foods, which are usually high in fat. 95% of the foods that we overeat are high in fat. Half of them are sweet, half of them are not. Why? Because which taste buds get hit, okay? What are your, your three really sensitive taste buds that you have, the, the, the real deal? Fatty, salty, sweet. Hyperpalatable means you have something that exerts a strong effect on two of those three. Okay? It's easy to eat. High, high flavor. You get a significant response there. But you see where we're going? People are saying, well, you get a dopamine response, but that's not from the sugar, is it? It's really from the fat combined with one of the other two. Okay, that's what hyperpalatable is, and to be calorie dense. Give you examples. I will name foods down the road that people overconsume. Chips, any type, American chips, what you Brits call crisp. Right? Chips, that's real high on any sort of chips. Are those sweet? Pizza. Is that sweet? See where we went with both of those? They're fatty and they're salty. How about cheese? It's cheese in general. Okay, then we get to the other stuff. Then we get to cake, ice cream, treats, things like that, candy. They're all high in fat and refined sugars concurrently. But the, the calorie density usually comes from the fat. This is what people are overeating. They're, they're not overeating straight sugar. Granted, sugary drinks can contribute, okay? Granted, soda, you know, sodas of different types, you know, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, whatever. We don't need to discriminate, pick out any, any brand. Let's just call all of them, all right? We can go down the road. They're all the same. Let me just see, it's again, high fructose corn syrup, but they're a little salty. They add a little extra sodium sometimes, right? but they don't have the same calorie density the other stuff has. They're up there, but you're not gonna get the same overfeed. In other words, you can eat a hell of a lot more calories from ice cream or pizza or potato chips than you can from a whole giant bottle, two liter of soda, right? 
because you get full on it. It's too much liquid. It's not calorie dense enough for people to really overeat. And I'm not saying it's good because it's not. But that's not what people are, are doing. It's the fatty foods that are either really salty, so that's savory, or then they're treats, the treat junk food. High in fat, high in refined sugars concurrently. But it doesn't have to have any sugar. It doesn't even have to have carbs. People will overeat cheese. But there's your whole situation. This is what creates it. This is a hyper palatability that people over consume. So even if people are going to talk about, well, this is a study in rats, but that same response doesn't happen in humans to the sucrose. We metabolize carbs and all sorts of things vastly differently than rodents. That's why we do not carry over rodent studies on any sort of uh, carbohydrate metabolism to humans because it ends badly. We've come up with a lot of really bad conclusions that way numerous times. So you want proof. I will prove to you that anyone who says you're addicted to sugar is not. You clearly don't know what an addiction is. If you've never been around an addict, it's blaringly obvious because you're going to claim you're addicted to a substance, not a category. Like, you know, let's say you have, you have a personal food addiction to pizza or ice cream because of some trauma and other stuff, right? These are fall into that other category, the hyper palatable calorie dense foods that we binge on. You're not addicted to sugar as a substance or even the sucrose. Let's call it sucrose. I believe that's what was used in those rodent studies. Let's stick to the same thing. Also known as table sugar. That is what table sugar's chemical name is. Sucrose. It's 50% fructose, 50% glucose molecule bound together. All right. Very simple bond. You're not addicted to it. I can prove it. Take a bowl of it and put it in front of you. Eat a meal so that you're not starving. Right now, if you haven't eaten here 24 hours into a fast, okay. Take that bowl of dry sugar. Put a spoon there and see if you will eat the whole thing. With no prompting. Just spoon the whole thing down. And put that bowl out every day. And if you empty that bowl with no prompting and, and you only note and you leave it out all the time and you don't let yourself starve and get ravenous, so you're not just hungry and willing to eat anything, including a piece of leather, if you're hungry enough, you won't do it. You'll get sick of it. Most people will not be able to get through the whole bowl. They'll get sick of it. Even if they can pull it off, they can force themselves to do it, which means you're not an addict. How many days in a row are you going to do it? An addict will do it every day. An addict will finish that bowl off every day and go looking for more. They'll go looking for more sugar. And no, it's, they're not going to look for, oh, yeah, I need to have it mixed with a milkshake. No, they'll go straight the pure raw sugar. Maybe they'll mix it with a little water if they need to to chug it down faster. Okay, that is an addiction. You're not addicted to sugar. Nobody is. It's nonsense. Okay. Nobody's sucking anyone off in alleyways for sugar. All right. It's complete nonsense. But how many gurus tell you, oh, you're addicted to sugar? Anyone who tells you that, they're a con artist. They're a con artist. They're a charlatan. Run. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I'll talk to you guys next time.